Well, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more A Well Betrayed DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms. This time we're looking at something a tiny, tiny bit different. So I was asked if I could put together a How I Fight uh, video by one of the viewers. So I thought, yeah, be interesting, I will do that. So first of all, I just want to talk to you about how I set this up. Now it's a custom battle, so it's not actually realistic for fighting the AI in the correct way but I thought you know relatively balanced armies we have everyone here as a mid tier um, officer so I've just chosen the middle one for every one of them uh, same on both sides we've got a sentinel a strategist and a vanguard for the enemy we've got a vanguard a champion and a strategist on this side doesn't really matter I've just tried to make it as equal as possible I've given two artillery pieces um, multiple bolt crossbow on this side I don't have one on this side because that's not how I like to fight uh, but it doesn't really matter I've given them slightly better archers than I have I've just got the regular arch militia and um, they of course have the camp crushers I don't have any troops that powerful I've got some G militia I've got some decent cavalry they've got some decent cavalry you know it should be a good fight they have a slight advantage um, and I've given them a slight advantage because I can't change the difficulty to legendary mode on a custom battle. If someone does know how to do that, please let me know. Um, but I don't know how to do it. Now, <clears throat> um, I am technically the attacker. Technically. But uh, I am not going to ideally attack them in uh, this way. I like to try and force the AI to follow how I want to fight a battle. Okay, so my aim is not at all to attack, even though I'm technically the attacker. I want to suck them onto my lines and fight them off there. So um, what I'm going to do is cut here just before we get into a battle, and I'm going to give you a little presentation of what exactly I aim to do for the battles um, in sort of a perfect world scenario, and then I'll fight this in real time, and you can see what I'm trying to do in a real situation with all the flexibility you need to take if you're fighting a battle against any opponent. All right? I'll see you back in a second. And so we'll jump to this. And I'm just going to use this to very, very quickly explain how my tactics are going to work in the battle you're going to see. It's not going to be 100% accurate because, of course, the AI has randomness to it. Not in the same way that a human does, but still, things don't play out exactly the same way as you expect. But these are how my tactics work nine times out of ten against the AI. So this is a generic AI formation. Don't take anything as, like, this is how to fight this specific formation with the AI. No, this is just generic. The AI armies can vary wildly. We'll just assume this is a standard AI army. <clears throat> to deal with any army, I like to have a backbone of very solid, reliable troops. This will either be spear guard, who can do their turtle formation, or spear wall formation, basically guys with shields who can form a wall, or saber infantry, or gen sword guard, who can also form a shield wall. I know the yellow axes can also do it, but I tend not to use those as my frontline troops. I have a better role for axes in general. Now on the flank, if I have spears, I will then have sabers on the flank. If I have swords in the middle, I will have spears on the flank, okay? And ideally, these are another group of people who can form a shield wall or form a turtle formation. Behind them, I have my archers. Now these guys are now protected. I tend not to use crossbows. Crossbows are most effective when they fight on the flanks. This leaves them open to being attacked and you need to have more micro. Whilst if you have archers, yeah, sure, you lose a little bit of punch. You may lose a little bit of range as well in the lower tiers, but they can shoot over your lines more effectively and you'll still get a good amount of damage. Protecting them on their flanks are my shock infantry. This is where I have my axes, either axe bands, yellow axes, potentially even G infantry, okay? Because they have a similar sort of punch to them when they hit. Now these guys' jobs are a last line of defense to fill holes in the line if we take a beating because they have, you know, a Lubu type character coming at us. Um, or they are there to just prevent, if cavalry do get around the flanks, just prevent them hitting our archers straight away. And if we roll a flank, they're the guys who are gonna hit their front line in the flanks and just carve them up. Behind them, we have our artillery. I tend to go for trebuchets, and of late I've been going for a pair of trebuchets. This is very, very expensive, but it does give you much more flexibility when it comes to fighting. And I tend to go for trebuchets over the siege crossbow, because the siege crossbow, again, is most effective on a flank, um, unless it's on top of a hill and your troops are at the bottom of the hill. Um, its range is less good, and the way I want to fight is I want to control where the enemy moves. And so if I have the range, and if I have two of them, I will always have 
more siege weaponry than the enemy. Most of the time the AI doesn't really feel that much siege weaponry until quite late game. Um, and if I have two of them, I'm going to outgun the enemy. So whatever happens, we're going to force them onto our line. So yeah, I use the trebuchet. It just gives me more, more battlefield control. On the flanks, I will have my shock cavalry. And I do mean shock cavalry. There are very, very few units of regular melee cavalry that really interest me. Shock cavalry have the charge effect, and that's what we're going to be doing. Charging. We don't want to be an extended melee with these guys, so I don't really go for melee cavalry. I just want cycle charge after cycle charge after cycle charge. Now, I will set my cavalry up. Unless I have overwhelming numbers of cavalry, in which case I'll split them up. But basically, I will set my cavalry up to mirror the enemy's cavalry movement. In this case, they have two units on one flank, two units on the other flank. I will do exactly the same. <clears throat> then it comes to my characters. So I will nearly always have a strategist because the strategist gives me the opportunity for artillery. It gives me formations. And a very good commander may give me formations, uh, but they don't give you the artillery. So I tend to always have a strategist. Now, if my strategist is better at debuffing the enemy, then I will have him slightly closer to the front line in between the spears and the archers. If not, I'll have him back amongst the artillery as long as his radius can still reach the front line so he can buff our own troops. That's his job. He is going to hold the middle. Then I have my fighting characters. Now, my personal preference for all fighting characters is a generic sentinel with tenacity of steel and that uh, uh, I forget what it's called, the skill that gives them, you know, a plus 30% boost to uh, their own melee evasion and attack rate. You know, just that and a decent weapon. They will out duel almost anyone unless they've got like a super duelist. So that's what I tend to have. But failing that um, and the fact I don't have any artwork for generic sentinels, um, I would have a decent champion. And then I tend to go for vanguards over uh, commanders, unless the commander is, you know, like a Cao Cao. Um, I do have a thing for Xun Yo as well, uh, who's a ger generic. Uh, well, he's actually unique, but he doesn't have the unique portrait. Um, you know, I do have a thing for them. They are extremely good commanders. And Cao Cao especially is an extremely good commander, and they can properly fight. Um, but vanguards just kill more in amongst units. And I'm not aiming for a duelist. That's what my other guy's for. This is a unit killer type uh, character. So a decent, someone with Roar of the Beast or someone with Flames of the Phoenix, not Xiaohuan who I have here, who just has Final Rush, which is just utterly, totally useless in comparison to all the other skills that a Vanguard can start with. He has that. Um, but, you know, something that can affect the enemy morale or something that can just, you know, splash attack a whole area. That's ideal for what you want, because that guy's going to be a unit killer. Now, how I fight. First of all, what I want to do is move my army in position in this formation where my artillery can start flinging its rocks at the enemy. Now, even if the enemy does have its own artillery, we should just outgun it because we have more. And I will just be patient. If I lose some men, I lose some men. They're in tur uh, turtle formation, they're in shield wall formation. We can split them into loose formation if we want to. You know, if the artillery is raining down, it doesn't really matter. We can do the formation that suits the uh, exact situation at the time. But if they don't have artillery, no worry. Just have them in turtle formation, shield wall formation ready for their front line. If not, loose formation, reduce your casualties before they get close. Change formation as they get closer. The idea is we throw the rocks. And this is going to encourage their lines to start to advance towards us. Now... As they're advancing towards us, we're going to start focusing on the cavalry. First thing we're going to take note of is the fact that they have an enemy commander who is away from the other men. That is Zhang Fei in this case with some of the cavalry. Now because he is separated from the bulk of the army and the, his own support network of his uh, fellow officers, we are going to gank him and get rid of him. Okay, let's just get rid of one commander. So what we do is this, we send the two melee officers over to deal with him supported by the cavalry as this is going on we're also going to send our other cavalry out wide this is going to cause one of two things to happen their cavalry on their right flank our left flank is going to start to head towards my cavalry in which case we're going to have a cavalry battle where i'm going to have one unit lock down both of their units whilst the other unit cycle charges in and they'll break their cavalry it doesn't matter how good they are they'll break quite quickly They'll come back, of course, but they, they will break. And we just want to win that skirmish. 
We're not talking about holding ground, we just want to break through so we can get behind their lines. On the other side, it's the same thing. Zhang Fei and his cavalry are likely to come straight for our officers, straight for our cavalry, and that's going to create a lovely little punch up away from their lines. And this is a fight we will win because we have more officers, we have better shock cavalry. We'll use the officers to lock down all of their units and we'll just charge in with the cavalry until their cavalry breaks. Now again, their cavalry may survive and may come back, but for all intents and purposes, they're now useless because we have managed to punch through and we are behind their lines. This gives us control of the flanks and therefore control of the battlefield. Now their troops are going to advance onto ours, and in this case we've got their cavalry doing what the AI does a lot of the time as well, and that's just hold its position on the flank. This is fantastic because it means that their archers are completely unguarded. You've either got to fight for control and get behind their archers, or the AI makes a mistake and you get straight into the archers anyway. Now, whilst they're advancing, our archers and our artillery are shooting the crap out of them, so they're losing men all the time. But when they get close, they're going to engage our lines, their cavalry, if they have cavalry surviving on the flanks, fine, or if they just have cavalry that have survived the skirmishes with our cavalry, they're going to start coming into the flanks and cycle charging our own men. If we lose some men, if we lose some axes, if we lose some swords, it doesn't really matter. Even if our archers get stuck into a fight here, it doesn't really matter. So our boys will hold. Our front line will be engaged, and then from that position, we can start to swing out our axes. Now, if we have completely free flanks on both sides, we can send axes out on both sides. If one side's already been won, but the other side is engaged, we just send one set of axes out. It doesn't matter. They will get on the flanks, and they will then start to really chew into the enemy formation. Our spears and our sabers are not really going to be killing. They're in a very defensive mode. So their idea is just not break. Our axes are the first hammer to fall on the enemy lines. Then come the big hammers. Our surviving uh, characters, Shahu Dun, Shahu Yuan, will come in, and our cavalry will come in, just charging lines and smashing, and we'll just rinse and repeat. Hit, in, out, in, out, and just cause chaos in their lines, cause their morale to shatter, and cause them to run. If we see any of their characters on their own, we send in our commanders two at a time onto one of theirs to gank them. I do not duel unless I'm 100% certain my character is going to win with very good health coming out of it. I know you get like a health boost when you win, but if they come out with 50% health, it's not worth it, right? Unless you really need to get rid of that character um, on the enemy side. Like if it's Lubu and you've got Dianwei and your Dianwei is level 9 and their Lubu is level 9, yeah, okay, your Dianwei is going to get hit the crap out of, but he's going to win and he's going to get rid of Lubu. So, <clears throat> you know... If you need to sacrifice the character's health to do that, then fine. If not, there's no point in dueling. Two on one every single time, you'll win. So don't worry about that. And you can lock down any single one of their characters with your shield, uh, you, with your shielded troops, especially spears are very, very good at that. If your axes get free, they can start to hack in more on their lighter troops on the flanks and just rip them apart. That's basically how I want to fight. I want to control what the AI does draw them onto my lines and just hammer the hell out of them with my axes, my shot cavalry and my officers. Okay, let's see it in real time now. Okay, so here we are and you can see it's pretty similar formation to how I discussed before in presentation. So I've got six lots of spears. Um, they're going to be holding there and holding the line and I've backed them up with some G militia. They could be saber militia, they could be whatever. I just chose G because, you know, I wanted something different from the sabers, frankly. Um, but I normally prefer to have axes of all, but just because of the makeup of my officers, I couldn't have them. Um, I've got my archers behind and I've got my artillery behind them. On the flanks, I have my cavalry and I've defended ours with, I've popped these oil into the uh, forest. So I want to set fire to the forest so that when the enemy attack, even though I'm technically the attacker, when the enemy are forced to attack me, they're going to have to go through fire, which is going to knacker their morale. Um, I've also put all of these guys on fire arrow and these guys on flaming shot for the same effect. Um, I've placed my towers and I've placed my uh, uh, spikes basically uh, in the ground there. Now what I do want to do before everything else starts is take these guys off guard mode um, and then we're going to kick off. Now the enemy looks like he's over here somewhere. So what we're going to do, because we're not 100% certain where they are, we're going to go scouting with our two heavy hitters, Gongsun Zan and Xu Chu. Just to have a quick look where they are. We want to kind of try and stay out of the range of this, but, you know, 
we have to fight it, we have to fight it. Um, we just want to see where their lines are and see who we can draw out. So their lines are like this. They have their artillery over there. They're set up in pretty good defensive formation. But we'll shift over here. So I saw Gao Shun for a second there. Yeah, there he is. We want to sucker out their cavalry. That's the idea. Bring their cavalry out to play. Just so they can follow us away from their main line, away from their archers, and then we can get our cavalry on their cavalry and mess them up. That is what we're trying to do here. All right, so Hongfu Song is shooting at us. They've got a tower there. We are going to take a little bit of a hit, but I think this is worth doing. Go in there, Flames of the Phoenix. And boom. And you as well, boom. Smash, smash, smash. Lots of death. Lots and lots of death. Lots of destruction. I think we can have a roar as well. How are you doing? Pretty damn good. I think, yeah, one of their guys has already looked like... Uh, no, they have. They've buggered off. They've buggered off. We have smashed their cavalry to smithereens with these two guys, which is what we wanted to do. Now I need you to run back and see if we can draw their officers out with us okay that's the idea come on back over here back over here nope not overly interested in following me back in let's go hit Huang Fu Tong um we're not gonna duel by the way um in this fight we're not gonna duel unless we absolutely need to bash Huang Fu Tong has pretty good melee evasion pretty good armor and everything else but Gong Zan and uh, Shu Chu both hit like trucks. So until they send some support over to him, we're just going to keep messing him up. Um, or until he decides to run away. Because we're just going to keep hitting him for thousands. Every time. And if he runs away, I'll just have Gong Zan follow him. Because Gong Zan is quick. Seriously quick. Um because he's a white horse rider. Oh, come on, we've missed every time in the last few hits. Smack him. There we go. There we go. Right. Shoot you. Back up. We don't need that. Let Gong Sanzan deal with it. So that, to be honest, was pretty effective. Same idea. Their cavalry engaged us. I didn't send any cavalry support up because this was just a scouting mission, but because I had two heavies, Easy enough for me to smack the crap out of them. We've beaten up Hong Fu Song. Hopefully he's gone for good with Gong Sun chasing him. Oh, nope. Let's go whale on him. Come on. Come on. They're going to send all of their cav, really, to help. Okay, where's my cavalry? I'm going to send my cav up here. Um, Gong Sun fighting. Shu Chu's going to be there in a second. All of their cavalry is still coming, but it's all right. They can still come. That's fine. I have confidence that these guys will be able to... We're just trying to force him from the field, okay? That's all we're really trying to do now. Trying to force him from the field. Shoot you, get in here. Bosh. And you, Flames, can wreck this unit because this is a pretty fit-looking unit of Lance Cavalry. Shoot you is hit. Gong Sanzan's going to hit in a second. And a little bit of raw. And we will now look to escape. We've done huge amounts of damage. Now it's time to move. They're starting to shift up all of their guys. Fine. Let's shift our cavalry over here. Uh, form, go. You guys, round here to the flank. Right. Yep. Come on, both of you. Let's move. So we've pinned them into one fight. We're going to shift these guys around the back and get in there. Come on, you two. I need you out. All the way over here, please. You guys, blob in here. Artillery is now starting to shoot. They have been suckered in. Actually, move. This is going to be a little bit risky. I wouldn't normally do it like this, but I want to take out their trebuchet because that's going to force them to come to us. That cavalry is completely wiped. Gong Sanzan, I need you to come out here, please. Go, 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 go. That cavalry is completely wiped. Completely wiped. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Why are you stopping? 
How are they hidden? It's a bloody trebuchet. Come on, Gongsanzan. Pull your life together. Right. This cavalry now can shift around this flank because we've got control. They want to keep fighting uh, sh shoot you with that cavalry. They can. This cavalry, unfortunately, is going to suffer massive casualties. The idea is rip this thing apart here. That's all we need to do is just rip this apart. Hopefully rip the other one apart. Just rip that apart and then bugger off as fast as we can. Right, you... Down this way. Gong Sanzan, pull your life together. Right, back out. Over here. Nice. You don't need to be in this formation anymore. We're pulling all of our cav over here because that's where it seems to be the bulk of their archers. He's going to shift over here. He might run away. If he runs away, he runs away. It's not much I can do about it. Gong Sanzan, I would like you to come back because that's utterly pathetic what you're doing, frankly. Um, utterly pathetic. I'm disappointed in you. This fire is now starting to spread over here. Um, shoot you. What I want you to do is just stand there, please. Uh, yeah, they've run. Not not overly surprising. The rest of my cavalry is hidden. Gongsasan's buggered off because of that. Right, that's disappointing, actually. Very, very disappointing. But vanguards can be a bit... <sighs> wet shall we say. But that does mean that my cavalry now has low morale, which means we might not get these guys back. Um, even though normally we would. But it's fine. We don't actually need them. As long as these three stay together. Uh, the G militia are wobbly as well. Alright. Everybody's wobbly. Dash you, I'm going to need you over here. Cannot believe Gongsanzan ran because of that. That's really pathetic. Still, their cavalry is pretty much destroyed. This G militia I'm going to put on a formation here. The other G militia, because we don't need them to overlap, I'm going to move them slightly further forward into the forest. Just so they're hidden. Um, they could have something to do here. Everything's on fire up here, which is quite nice. Tempted to start burning stuff as soon as they start advancing rather than waiting until they're right on top of us. But, you know, who knows? We can make that decision a little bit later on. Onful Song is still in a bad way. The archers are not in a good way either. They really are not coming back. They're just not coming back. That's a real shame. That's a real shame. Smash into these archers. They're going to complain a little bit. Are they going to start shooting? No, they can see them, though. Get over here. If they can see them, so you fall back as well. Because the flame's going to kick up around here. You guys shift over to the flank. Just shoot. Let's just burn. Just burn and move. So all of you guys move around here. Good man, Jash. Shoot. Right. Stand over here near them. Right. You guys can move over. Their archers have to move through their own bloody fire. Um... This guy here is in trouble. Multiple bolt crossbow. Yeah, it's quite nice. Really quite nice. My artillery, unfortunately, is out of ammunition. But the flames are going to start to spread. Man over here, go straight for them. See if we can take that out. Have to be a little bit cleverer with the cavalry than I intended to be. Um, just because, you know, they are super, super wobbly. You set fire. That's fine. Their archers have a bigger range than me, but that's why we're in this formation. We're going to lose a couple of men, but it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Really not the end of the world. Right, you back up here. How are we doing? They dead? They are almost dead. Nice. Right, they're committing their cavalry, which means we can commit ours. This way, boys, this way. Go. Our cavalry's going to take a hit, which they're not going to like. But then our cavalry reinforcements are going to come in and absolutely smack the crap out of them. Their rear line will then be open, and we will be good to go, I think. Whoops, did not mean that. Right. Here we are over here. The fire is starting to kick up. 
they have some camp crushers there who are going to absolutely tear through my men. Um, camp crushers are really, really solid. But, don't matter, because we have all of that dealt with. Reform, before you all run away. Reform, reform, reform. And then I'm going to want one, two, three. Go, 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 go. Charge. I know we have fire. I know we have all of that shit to deal with. Go on, all of you. Just charge into that group then. No, nope, they're back up. They're not hidden anymore. Charge, charge, charge. All the fire in the world over here, which is going to hurt them more than it hurts me. Swing into this lot. Fight. Come on. Smash. Boom. Right, he'll have a lot of fun over there. Over here, we're going to hold. My cavalry has hit, and they haven't broken, which is magnificent. Um, I mean, the enemy's broken, which is phenomenal. Um, you guys swing off in this direction. You guys swing off in this direction. Some of my cavalry, because it's wobbly, might start to doubt itself and start to run. That's absolutely fine if they do that from this point onwards. Because we've already done the rear charge. We've destroyed their, their ability to pretty much do anything. You get out of that fight because we don't need you fighting him. Um, you're going to stay in there. You guys are on that saber. You guys swing around here and form up. They've broken. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All right. G, uh, reform. Boys, over here. Let's see if we can draw Gaoshun out. Tower's been destroyed. That's not exactly a problem. You guys chase them. You guys, I need that camp crusher unit gone. Uh, shoot you. Two, one. Boom. Hit. Good man. Right. Now I need you over on that side. They'll chase the camp crushers off. You guys can come over here. Cav reform. And again, you see my lines are in still pretty damn good shape. Right, they've gone. Chase them instead. You boys, chase them off. We don't want the camp crushers coming back. Over here, the camp crushers have come back. But uh, we'll be able to deal with them. Chase those archers. These camp crushers are already starting to wobble. Shift shoot you back behind the line just so we can move him exactly where we need to. He doesn't get bogged down by their men. They're being chased off. They're being killed. Jash, shoe is coming. Right, go for Gaoshun. They've come back. That's disappointing. Uh, you lads, if you wouldn't mind just moving here. Yeah, shoe, if you can shift up to this area, that would be brilliant. Uh, right, they've gone for good. Chase them, just make sure they've gone for good. Victory. That simple. And look, our front line has barely budged. All this fire and fields, that was cavalry and arch fire that won this. So, that's it. That's how I did. Close victory, fine, because Gongsun San ran away. Had he not been such a wet fish... We would have won it by more but yeah i hope you found this interesting it's the first one of these type of videos i've ever done so um yeah I, like i said it was a viewer request as well if you do have any requests please let me know below i hope you've enjoyed it i'll see you next time for more thank you very much for joining me bye bye